Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can relight a photo in Lightroom. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get an image effect like this in Lightroom. This is the before version of the image. It's really quite flat, it's very blue, and it lacks excitement. But this is the finished version of the image, and you can see that by darkening the image and lighting it selectively, that we've created something that's visually a lot more interesting. So let's get started. So here is the image straight out of the camera, and the first thing that I'm seeing as I'm looking over it is that it is a bit blue. We would expect it to be a bit blue at dusk, but I think I would like it to be just a little less so. So I'm going to pick up the white balance selector here, and I'm just going to click on something that I think should probably have been a neutral grey or a white. So I could click here on the roadway, or I could click here on this building, and I get pretty much the same result. So I'm going to put my white balance selector back. I think probably I've gone the other way a little bit much, so I might just walk this a bit back towards blue and just call that good. Now the image needs straightening just a little bit, so I'm going to straighten it. And to do that, I'm going to use the straightening tool here. The crop overlay tool will let me do that. I'm going to click on the straighten tool. I'm going to drag across a line that I think should be straight. And I'm going to aim for this piece here, this walkway, because I think that's going to give me a good fix for the image. So I'm just going to square that off and click Done. And that straightened the image somewhat. The next thing to do is to improve the image overall. So in the basic panel, I'm going to look at the exposure and probably increase the exposure just a little bit here, just to lighten it up a little bit. I'm also going to look for a white and a black point. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key as I drag to create my white point. Now I'm going to look and see what these areas are on the image. Well, the areas that are showing up as being pure white are the areas where the lights are. I may be able to recover some of that by just dragging down on the highlights first. And now let's go and see where our whites are. Well, we're able to bring back in now some better whites into the image by just making sure that we're just starting to get white. We're not going to be able to buy this one back because it is overexposed. And to fix it, that point in the image, we would have to over adjust the image. So I'm going to ignore that and just make sure that here when I click on the Alt key or hold the Alt key as I drag on this white slider, that I'm just getting the beginnings of whites into my image. Now let's check the blacks. Again, holding the Alt or Option key, let's make sure that we've got some blacks coming into the image. Now because this was shot at dusk, I'm actually going to look for a little bit more black than I typically would. So I'm going to bring it down to minus 10 here. And that's giving me some good black and white points in the image. Now I'm going to look at shadows and perhaps open up the shadows just a little bit here. And let's add some clarity, some sort of mid-tone contrast adjustment, and perhaps a little bit of extra vibrance. Now that's a good starting point for fixing the image, but we want to make this look a little bit more exciting. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to darken the top of the image, and I'm going to do that using a graduated filter. So I'm going to click on the graduated filter, and then I'm going to pick the point at which I want to start darkening. So I'm just going to drag down here and add a very gradual change. The depth of this graduated filter means that it's going to be applied full strength up here, and then it's going to peter out to the extent that it will then disappear at this point. But it's going to be a gradual petering out of the effect. I'm going to drag down the exposure because I want to darken the top of the image. If I'm happy with that, I'll just click Done. Now I want to light the cars in the middle of this image, and I'm going to do that using the new radial filter that is new in Lightroom 5. So I'm going to click on the radial filter, and I'm going to drag a long, flat oval into the middle of the image. And I put it in the wrong place, but that's fine, because I can just drag it into position once I've got it 
into the image. If I get a starting point, then I can start adjusting it. So I'm going to bring it down and just use it to light these cars here. So I'm going to give it a reasonably large feather of 50. Now that I've got the oval here, I can decide what I want to do with it. So I could either lighten the area in the middle or darken the area around, or I could do both. And I think I'm going to do both. So right now I'm going to concentrate on the around the outside edge of this radial filter. And because invert mask is not turned on, that is the, in fact the area that I'm going to affect. So I'm going to drop the exposure down. I'm just going to darken that a little bit and combined with that graduated filter we're getting our eyes being more drawn into the center of this image here. So if I'm happy with that I can just click done and now I'm going to add a second radial filter. So I'm again going to click on it. Again I'm going to click and drag to draw it out and position it where I want it to be and size it to what I want it to be. And this time I'm going to invert the mask because I want to affect the area in the middle and I want to give this quite a high feather so that the effect that I apply here is going to be quite soft. And I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit just to brighten this area in here and I'm going to increase its clarity too and perhaps even its saturation, just anything that I can throw at this area of the image that's going to draw your eye into it. And then I'll click Done. Now if we want to see the effect here, let's just close down the presets, let's go to the history and I'm going to just click before I added those radial filters. So this is the before and this is the after on those radial filters. And you can see that we've applied quite a big punch to this image just with those radial filters. Now this is also of interest to me, this truck here, and in particular the signage on it. So I'm going to do something with that now. And for that I'm going to use the adjustment brush. I really need to use the adjustment brush here because there's no other tool that is going to let me get into this area in quite the same way. I'm going to click to show the selected mask overlay, just making sure that I'm painting with 100% flow and 100% density here. And I'm just going to paint over this truck. Now I've got the mask overlay displayed, which you can see by selecting the checkbox here on the toolbar. You can also press the letter O. Now I'm going to shrink my brush right down here so I can get into the corners, if you like, of this truck. Now this is all totally adjustable, so if I don't like the effect that I've got or if I need to adjust it later on, I can do so. So I can just switch here between brush A or B, it doesn't matter which brush you use, and the eraser, which of course is going to erase the mask that I have. So now I have the truck selected here. Let's see what we're going to do with it. Well, sharpness was already enabled and I think that then in fact that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave sharpness enabled. I am going to increase the saturation because I want these colors to be more saturated. I may want them to be a little bit more blue perhaps than they are right now. So I can bring the temperature back to maybe about minus seven to bring it into the blue so that we're cooling it down. I can also increase the exposure a bit to lighten it. I can increase contrast to make it a little bit more contrasty. And I can also up its clarity. Again, that's a mid-tone contrast adjustment. You'll see that some of these are having a different effect. When I actually increase contrast, I darken parts of this image area a little bit because that's what contrast does is it tries to give you more of a tonal range, a bigger tonal range. So that ends up with the darker areas of the selection here being made darker and the lighter areas lighter. But clarity has an overall lightening effect. So the more I bring up clarity, the more lightening I'm getting of that area of the truck. So you may want to experiment with these to see what's going to give you the best results. If you're happy with what you've got, click Done.
Now I want to have a second hit at this so again I'm going to click on the adjustment brush and I'm just going to paint over this again. Let's just show the mask overlay. I've just pressed the letter O to do that. Just want to add in a bit more clarity and a bit more sharpness here. I just think it could use a little bit of both but I'm not going to bring in anything else. Just going to erase this and you'll be a bit more careful when you're working with these brushes than I am being and so here let's just increase the clarity let's increase the sharpness way up and I just might bring the exposure down a bit on this second hit with the adjustment brush and then click done now let's have a look at adding a vignette around the edges of the image just to bring our eye into this central part of the image. We can do that using the effects panel here and I'm going to bring in a highlight priority vignette effect. Now I'm going to bring it in as way too much because I want to see how the settings are going to affect it. The midpoint is going to adjust whether it's right in the middle or pushed to the very edges of the image and I want to push this one quite out to just the edges so it's not affecting the middle of the image and having done that I'm going to back off my amount. So I'm just getting a general darkening of these very very edge pieces of the image. Now before I finish up I want to add a little bit of extra crispness to the image and I'm going to do that using the tone curve. So I'm going to come in here and have a look at medium and strong contrast here because I want this to be a little bit shinier if you like and I'm thinking somewhere between medium contrast and strong contrast. In fact I think we can probably deal with strong contrast here. I think that's going to work just fine. And then of course we'll sharpen the image as we should because this is a raw image and it will need to be sharpened. So let's go to the detail panel. Let's go and find a part of the image that we can actually see here. This image has got a lot of noise in it. We might have a look at the noise in a minute but right now let's just sharpen it because of course in Lightroom it doesn't matter whether we sharpen or do noise reduction first. We can do anything in any order. It's not going to affect the final result. So I'm going for a low radius and a slightly higher detail value. These two settings, low radius, high detail. And I'm going to mask it quite heavily because I really only want to sharpen the edges. And I certainly don't want to sharpen the noise in the image. So let's see a masking value of around 88 on this image. I'm going to bring the amount of the sharpening down just a little bit. Let's zoom in here. I just want to see this noise and from the looks of it it's both colour and luminance noise. Well Lightroom already has a adjustment for colour noise for my camera. It sets it at 25 but I'll probably need to bring this up a little bit so I'm going to bring it up closer to 50 to try and kill the colour noise here and there is also a lot of luminance noise. That luminance noise is a sort of monochromatic black and white, grey and white noise if you like and colour noise is going to be coloured pixels. Pixels that are side by side and very different colours so in this grey area we might have green and pink and blue and yellow pixels. That's colour noise. So I've got luminance noise as well. I'm just going to wind this up a little bit with luminance noise in particular what I don't want to do is just go all the way because while that might kill a noise it's also killing any sharpness in the image and it's sort of flattening out areas of detail. So I just want to go as far with luminance noise as being a relatively good compromise between removing the noise but killing some of the detail in the image because noise reduction affects image detail and it affects sharpness of the image. So I'm going to just go for about 50% on this. It is really noisy because it was shot at night of course and I can see if the contrast or detail sliders are going to give me any happiness in readjusting this. I don't want to bring the noise back but I may want to bring back some detail into the image. Got quite a good result there. Let's just zoom back out again. 
and let Lightroom catch up with us. So let's have a look at the before and after on this image. I'm just going to go to my history panel and make sure I reset my settings here just before I started this video. So I'm going to choose copy history settings to before because that sets my history before at that point. So this is everything that we've done to the image. Here's the before image. It's relatively flat as we look at it now. It doesn't have a lot of contrast, but also the lighter area that our eye is sort of going to is in the middle here and perhaps a bit over here, but not into the foreground. But by relighting the image and drawing attention to these elements in the foreground and giving the image just a little bit of shine, we've ended up with a far more attractive and compelling image and one that's really talking about the time of day that we're photographing. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.